This is Prophets and Prophecies, teaching number nine, and this is from CD 5A of Prophet Deckard material. Let's just open up in prayer before we get going. Father God, Yahweh, we just praise your holy name, Father. We just praise and we thank you for what it is that you are unto us. Father, we just ask that you forgive us, and we thank you for forgiving us of our sins known and unknown against you and your holy covenant, Father God. Thank you, Father. We take authority over the powers of darkness, familiar spirits, anything that would assert itself against us in Yeshua's name, the name above all names. We just loose the power of the rock Kadesh. But darkness, you are bound. You're bound in the heaven. You're bound on the earth and below the earth. Bless God. Bless God. And the rock Kadesh we lose to bring to us, to nurture us. Let's bind up our mind and our flesh from what it is the rock Kadesh brings. And we just send out our angels, Father God to bring things forth that they are to bring. We just thank you, Father, as we enter into this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. You know, we're going to keep going in Jeremiah. We're going to keep going in Jeremiah. But before we get going, we're going to talk about a few things real quick. We're going to talk about when someone who is a real prophet, a seasoned prophet, and it gives you a word of knowledge or a prophecy over you, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. There's no curse involved in that. But understand, your mind, okay, your flesh, is going to play with it. It's going to get into imagining about it. It's going to get into fantasizing about it. And you must really be careful as you develop, right, into this prophecy or this word of knowledge comes into its fullness in your life, you know, what does that mean about being careful in that? I mean, you have to make sure that you don't get off track, that your mind and imagination from whence it was spoken. You know, God doesn't tell us all the details of who's, the where's, the when's, the how's, and what of that, and how it's going to happen. You have to let the time and the choices culminate into the manifestation of that prophecy that word of knowledge is. But getting into these preconceived ideas, right? And the mind and the flesh, they're going to get into that because they heard it. And they're going to try to get you to believe something else that isn't the truth. Why? Why can't, why can't we play with those imaginations and those fantasies? Because they're not a God. We're adding to the prophecy, right? Through the mind, right? Or the darkness or things we haven't cleaned out of our heart. See, knowing that we have to mature in the Word, we have to be able to advance ourselves in our understanding, and as we get to the time, the place, the who's, the where's, and the how's of the prophecy in your life, or the Word of Knowledge, it will become what it is supposed to come. But don't play with it. Don't play with it. But it's in connection, too, with your maturity and other things. Also, your mind and your flesh it will fantasize about a false prophecy or word of knowledge, or it's going to fantasize about something that's a true prophecy or a word of knowledge. You have to be ever so careful as the individual and in what God is trying to give you, that your flesh and your mind, this realm, these senses, don't try and play into that and interfere. But back to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the prophet. 48.10 Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord dis disrespectfully, deceitfully. And cursed be he that keepeth back the sword from blood. So curseth he that do the work of the Lord deceitfully. This should mean to us now that we've gone deeper into this series a whole lot more, shouldn't it? Shouldn't it? But how do we get into this category? What, what are these things, this we, Right? Or we're doing, uh, we're considering deceits. God doesn't see the things in our life the way that we see them. 
we're going to get caught up into these deceits, into these things, because we're not God. We're transitioning and we're learning and maturing. And we have to keep that into mind. But we're going to go over to Jeremiah 20, verse 6. 20, verse 6. And now, Pashur, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and there thou shalt die, and thou shalt be buried there, thou and all thy friends to whom thou hast prophesied lies. Okay. Early in the teaching, we talked in Jeremiah, and in chapter 14, not only the people who are false prophesying are going to die, be cursed, the people following after it will also be cursed. The danger is so immense here because we're talking about keeping curses out of our lives, out of our family's lives. And I hope as we finish this series, we can get to the point of really understanding this. You know, this is so far from the common churches today, this teaching. It's, it's interesting, even the prophet, the prophet, Tom Deckard, 30 years, 30 plus years of seasoned prophet, seasoned. And he would say the day that he knows, that he knows, that he knows, that he knows, he's probably wrong. Why does he say it like that? He's a prophet. What he's saying is he understood, the prophet understood it, how long it took to get a track record and then to run with it for 30 years in good standing with the father. He knew and he, re, he knew how to, he was so scared that he would say something from God that wasn't from God. He understood the truth of the curses and the effect on him, his family, and the people that are listening to him and his walk with the father. He understood why he's here and what he's to do. And we are to get into a place where we understand. And we understand that if we're out from under the curses, the blessings are going to come. They're just going to come to your door. They're just going to come to you. I'm not saying you never have to leave your house. But what I'm saying is the effort in this natural world that we try and do with these senses and this flesh and this mind is not going to take us over to where we need to be to get things done. Grace is just about over. It is for us to be able to work in the other kingdom, to be able to pull down from there, from here, participating in the other realm with the Father and the forces that he has over there. That's what we are to do. That's what we are to rely on. And the things will manifest here. All that extra effort that the world has taught us and, and entrenched us in our thinking and our education system, that is not how it gets done. It's still work. It's still hard work, diligent work, but it's not in the natural. It's not at all. The prophet understood the truth of this. But you see, the church is not scared. It doesn't fear the Lord God. Oh? Well, the, cho the church shows a, a fleshly fear, a, 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 an emotional flesh fear. But they're not letting the, 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 the truth of it come. They're holding back the truth of it coming in because they're stuck in the flesh, they're stuck in the mind and ever knowing. Oh, ever knowing. But how did people get there? How did they? Well, it's interesting. It's like sinning. When you sin and say it's the first time you had this sin, okay, your spirit goes, ooh, whoa, 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 what are we doing? Okay, okay. The next time you sin, the spirit goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. And the next time, whoa, whoa. And then whoa, whoa, whoa. And then it's whoa. And then you can't really hear it anymore at all. Why? You've dulled it. You've calloused your heart. And so it is, like when we get caught up into familiar spirits. Tying God's word to or over people when it's not God. Over time, the Spirit is speaking to you saying, whoa, 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 what? That's not, it's not God. And you just go with it anyway. And it gets duller, and it gets duller, and it gets duller, until you're just believing the familiar spirit, or your mind, as though it's God, thinking it's God. Hmm. The flesh feels good. 
And the mind supports the flesh's feeling, right? Or I should say the, the flesh's curse, your curse. See, if every time that we have sinned and lightning was struck, bang, right there. Every time. Big old lightning bolt come down, little like a smoke, a black spot, you know, pushes you back a little bit. You know, you feel a jolt, you're tingly. You know, sometimes it knocks you down. Ears are ringing, hair smoking. So every time that type of experience happens, <laughs> what, what are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to start looking up. Real careful when your mind and flesh start saying, hey, God, uh, God's going this way. Tell everybody. When it's not God, you're going to be real careful. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way, does it? Does it? be a whole lot easier if God did it that way, wouldn't he? Right? Absolutely. Absolutely it would. I think a few people would have to die, and then, well, the rest of us are really going to start to line up when we hear about that or we see it. Right? Right? The same thing with prophecy. Attaching God's words or statements. If a few people die, like in the Old Testament, yeah, we know those stories. They're real. We'd straighten up. We were straighten up, and people did then. Well, it's good that God has a plan, isn't it? God's got a plan. He's going to get us where he needs to go, where we need to go. You know, I just use the word, or the term, Old Testament. Old Testament. See, there's nothing in the New Testament, again, a term, that permits people going out and using the Lord's name deceitfully. Absolutely nothing for anybody to ever be allowed to do that. Nowhere. Nowhere. End to end of the book. But still, you know, it's interesting. There's still a sect of Christianity that's uh, born again and the spirit filled. And, and they think that they can't sin again once they get through that. You know, they can't get familiar spirits. Didn't Paul say, I sin daily? Right? So how could that be? Paul said he sinned daily. I mean, there's still another sect of Christianity that think, no matter what, I'm going to heaven. No matter what. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I forgive my life. I have the testimony. You know, I, I believe. Uh, it's my right. I'm going. It's in the book. Yeah, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's okay if you're a liar? It's okay if you're a murderer? Well, no. No. It's okay if you're a drunkener, and there's more, and there's more, and there's more. You now, if you can do all of those things, what's the difference between the heathens out there and us? There are things for spirit-filled, believing believers that prevent them from going to heaven. Ouch. Ouch. There's no way. Once saved, always saved. Read the book. The key is understand. The key is to understand the truth of the matter. See, it's not only the ones who use God's name deceitfully, but it's the ones who listen to them. And my goodness, we have gone over this and over this and over this in prophet's material. But this is such big time stuff. See, anyone can break this down into where you're living at today. Where are you living at today? For me, where am I living at today? That's what I need to look at. How am I communicating? How am I thinking? How am I talking to myself? Am I tying God and what I believe God is up to saying or what the word is when it's not true? Am I believing a fantasy? Am I in a fantasy bubble? Cursing myself and my thinking or in my actions or others? It can be. Not just prophesying. Where you can get into this type of curse and thinking. It is so deep. It is so, so deep. This teaching. See, now that we have been through this series and we are truly starting to understand... 
Here comes the choice. Here come the choices. Here they come. You got the truth. Here are the choices. We broke the curses the other day. We broke them through prayer, speaking to them, not being bound to them anymore, staying bound to the Father. See, we choose to put them down, but we had to put down our pride to rip them out and to keep out these curses. See, it's a spiritual work. It's working in the Spirit. It is mandatory to be blessed by the Father God and to be holy for these blessings to come in. Work in the Spirit. Work in the Spirit. See, God is cleaning the act up of His people. He's cleaning it. This is the time of choice. Don't twist my words. Matt said the time this, that, whatever. We're entering into the time of choice. We're there. You know, how is this time of visitation coming? You know, we're cleaning up familiar spirits and curses. That's what's going on. You know, here's something. You know, how are we going to clean that up? All right. So somebody is out of line, familiar spirit, and you go to them and you, and you say, look, you say, you know what, I, uh, I, I see what you're saying, but uh, I don't think that you're attaching God properly to what you're saying. What? You said what? You said what to who? What? <laughs> you know, people are either going to run from it when you say that, or they're going to run to it and say, wait, you're right. See, people are going to get so offended that you came against them. Why? They're offended because their flesh and their mind is so tied into that and not the spirit. Pride of the flesh. Don't choose it. We're peeling back this onion. We are peeling it back. It is familiar spirit time. And we are tackling these things and we're going to be rained down on in blessings. It is time. It is time that this is exposed. This happens. And we go through it individually and collectively. It's time. The prophet has waited 30 years to be able to teach this teaching when he first taught it. Isn't that something in God's timing? 30 years for him to have the revelation in it and to be able to keep nurturing it and developing it as he had the revelation in it. He waited on God. He waited on God. It's now 45 years since he received it and it's being preached today. It's being preached today. See, getting this teaching in front of enough people is so important and we are at that time. We're at that time. See, look at it like this. We keep Shabbat. We keep New Moon. We keep the feasts. We keep the testimony of Yeshua. There's power in his name. Amen. Now what? Now what? What's changed? Hmm. Sometimes does it feel like we got ourselves in a bigger mess? As time went on in this? See, look at Brother Judah. Oh, Brother Judah. Yay, God bless him. He keeps Shabbat. keeps New Moon. He keeps the feast. But he doesn't keep the testimony of Yeshua. There's power in that name. See, Brother Judah lives in the blessings. And I'm talking for the most part. But we don't for the most part. We got the name of Yeshua. Plus, we're doing the other things that they're doing. Wait a minute. What are we not doing that they're doing yet? I mean, let's just think about it. What is it? What could it be? Why are we not able to demonstrate the power in the name of Yeshua given to us? Hmm. See... 
Israel, Ephraim, the ten tribes, us. We, we're going to be able to demonstrate something that Judah, right, can't. Eventually, what's going to happen? In the end times, which we're in, Judah will be jealous of Israel, Ephraim. Why? Because we're able to go past what it is that they have. See, but they're still watching their mouths, not running around, God said this, you do that, and this dominating each other. They are ever so careful with the covenant and keeping it, relying on it. For us to be able to come out from the familiar spirits and the things that we have been taught while living in, in this world, out from the covenant, we're still dragging those things forward or we're still learning to let them go. But the sooner and the faster and the quicker, however we choose to do that and live in the truth of it, the power and the anointing of God is going to increase and increase and increase because we're not relying on our minds and our flesh and these familiar spirits that we don't even know we have. Or do and don't want to let go. Face it. Just face it. If we can understand familiar spirits and curses, we can go forward with God. It's time that it is addressed. There's no one out there with all the answers. There isn't. Or we wouldn't be in such a mess. So, we have to get it together. we got to do it together. Individually first. See, in Jeremiah 23, 9, My heart within me is broken because of the prophets, and my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, and like a man whom wine has overcome, because the Lord, and because the words of his holiness. 23, 10. And for the land is fullness of adulterers. Are we full of adulterers here? Oh, yeah. For because of swearing, the land mourneth. Uh oh. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. Their courses is evil. All right. And the force is not right. So what's driving them is not right. 2311. And both prophet and priest are profane. So both of them. Yea, in my house I have found their wickedness, said the Lord. Okay. See, once a prophet or a priest, okay, talking in the fivefold here, give place to a familiar spirit so it can operate, that familiar steer, spirit can now operate in any place where it puts its hand, okay? So let's just take this into context as anybody. Yeah, anybody. The context in the scripture was to the prophet and the priest, but you can take this into your own life, anybody. Once you give place to that familiar spirit to operate, the familiar spirit now can operate in any place you put your hand. The Bible says do not give place. You gave place to a familiar spirit, so it gets to go every place you do, everywhere you put your hand. Physically, speaking, if you're behind the pulpit, or if you're out there. So the familiar spirit, remember now a familiar spirit, an angel of darkness acting as an angel of light, right? A familiar spirit acts like light, performs like light, and it speaks like light. Sucking in the people you communicate with. Sucking in the people, cursing them, cursing what you put your hand to. Your business, your life, your job family. We're going to quickly talk about another topic in here. We're talking about prophets growing up. Okay. In growing up, as you develop and mature, you can hurt your family or others while you're in the growing process. It is a fact. 
but you have to fix it. You gotta, you gotta do it by choice. But first, before you can do it by choice, you have to be able to recognize it. You do. See, how can a growing prophet expect the body to do if they don't come into a humble place themselves? You know, the, the, the growing experience of affecting other people. Ephraim, we are the remnant. We are the first fruits of that. We are going through so much. See, a part of being a seasoned prophet is to know that you know. Know that you have, at times, left a bit of a trail of hurt behind you and growth. But you know what? A seasoned prophet, he won't allow that to happen anymore. He's repented of it. He's broke the curses that over them and the people that he affected. He fixed it. He fixed his growing mistakes, put on himself and others. Prophet Deckard was the most humble man I had ever met. A lot to do with of what he came out of. It has to do with his failures, and he talked about them quite often. You know what he did? He owned it. And when he owned it, he broke it. What? The curses. And what happened? The father could move things forward. He never wanted to be part anymore of the immaturity of his youth, of growing into God's anointing that God placed in him. It was a big part of what made him seasoned to get him into a place where God could call him his friend. This is about prophets and prophecy. You could take that story, what I just went through and talked about, and you could apply it to your life, or your life, anyone's life. In our growth, yeah. Jeremiah 23, 12. Wherefore, their ways shall be unto them as slippery ways in darkness. So they're profane, okay? Back to, back to the, the scriptures here. And they shall drive on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. So we now have entered into a great time of visitation, haven't we? Absolutely we have. Is there much profane happening? Absolutely there is. The evil will come upon them in the time of their visitation. Is evil coming in? Judgment? Absolutely. It has been generations and generations since the time of the visitation. We're talking about prophecy being fulfilled. The time of Yeshua and transitioning to the church was a time and an area of visitation. But the people who are profane, who profane God, will have evil come upon them. And it is waxing worse, and it is waxing worse. The key, again, is to repent. Just repent. Break the curses. Come on. Just shut up. Oh, no one likes hearing that one. I don't. Sit down. And learn something. If you can get to the point where you can do those, God's got gotcha. you. God's got gotcha. you. Yeah. See, don't tie the things that are not of God to things. You know, it's, it's, it's to, these things are to be discerned by prophets. Prophets with track records. And you know, Prophets with track records are the only ones that can recognize other prophets. And prophets with track records, they're seasoned on the way to being seasoned. And that's where they got to go. Love them through it. They're loving you through it. Love them through it. 
Jeremiah 23, 13. And I've seen folly in the prophets in Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. Wow, prophets wrong, people wrong, right? Jeremiah 23, 14. And I have seen also in the prophets in Jerusalem a horrible thing. They committed adultery and walked in lies. They strengthened also the hands of the evildoers. And none doeth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof Gomorrah. Wow, that, what a statement. We know what happened. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, here's prophet's definition of a false prophet. Here it is. The word false prophet are connected to a person who does not prophesy by the Spirit of God. Somebody that speaks words that sound like God, but they have been deceived, and they are working in deceit. A familiar spirit gets involved. Now they are false prophets. Okay. That's his definition. It's a question. What are any of one of us tying God to when it wasn't God? What, what have we done? Right? Where have we faulted along the way? And that's where we need to reflect and take the time. Take the time. Take the time. Take the time. Know it. Know it so that you will never let it back in again. Be free of it. Take some courage, but you can do it. Face it. The Father's with you. You'll be all right. Jeremiah 23, 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of Gal. For... From the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. So it's polluting. It's polluting everywhere. It's polluting. 16. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. Sorry, missed it. Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. Ooh, almost missed that one. They make you vain. They speak a version of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. See, it couldn't be more straightforward than that, couldn't it? Pretty straightforward. See, most of these false prophets, you know what? They mean well. They really do. You know, some of them, it gets down to, well, listen to me, don't listen to him. And they start running their mouths about other prophets. You know, they're speaking out of their own hearts. A familiar spirit comes in to justify what comes out of their hearts. See in 23, 17, And they say unto them that despise me, The Lord has said, Ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after their imagination of their heart, No evil shall come upon you. All right. So don't people say today, Oh, no evil is going to come upon you. Don't people say today, oh, you can't be cursed. No, that's, you know, no, 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 that's, nah. Hmm. Don't people say, God loves me. Peace, peace. What are they doing? They're not facing what it is that they need to face. They're hanging on to the imagination of their own heart. And that's what it says. They're not facing it. Has it been hardened? Has it gotten duller, duller, duller? Has it gotten quieter and quieter and quieter until it's normal? Right? Boy, oh boy. Sounds like that's a familiar spirit's MO, isn't it? My boy, my boy. 2318. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived? The heard and heard his word. Who has marked 
his word and heard it. Okay. So somebody's saying, who's really hearing from God? Who's hearing from God? Some prophets are going this way, and some other ones, they're, they're going that way, and, and they believe in the same God, right? So what's going on? How can they all be right? Well, it's not possible, is it? No. No, they're, 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 it's conflicting. You got the word. You got the manual. But is it possible that they could all be wrong or partly wrong? Yeah, that is possible. But it's not possible that they could all be right. Got some growing to do then. See, there's many voices out there. How can anyone know where to go? How can we know where to go? There's so much talk. There's so many voices and things happening. But there's something very important. The sheep hear his voice. The sheep do. And we're all sheep, even in the fivefold. We are all sheep. And we have to hear his voice. See, too many people are speaking out of anointings of darkness. And they don't even know it. They don't even know it. See, people have a goal of being recognized by others. They do. That's what their goal is. Heaven should be our goal. Not being some mouthpiece of God is our goal. While you're on this earth. Yeah, there's anointed positions to be able to do things. And a prophet's one of them. But it's not, a, it's not the goal. The goal is to get to heaven. See, heaven is not a guaranteed place. We talked about it a little bit earlier. The way is narrow and few find it. Few. Few of the people who said, Jesus, come into my heart, will find it. Boy, that just, you know, that statement just shakes the church at the knees. See, it's not guaranteed. Paul said that he was trying to attain and had not yet attained. Wow. Paul, yeah, Paul. And what do we have today? People falsely attaching God to whatever they say from a hardened portion of their hearts. Yeah. A good part of the time supported by familiar spirits. You know, you could be called to raise the dead, be a major leader or otherwise by the Lord God. But until you develop a maturity into that, you're what? You're, you're, you're out of it. You're not going to be able to fulfill or do. But yet they're out there saying, God said this and God said that. Cursing themselves and cursing other people. You're not going to get anywhere. You have to develop. And as soon as your flesh grabs that wheel for long enough and says, I don't need to develop anymore. I got it. I got it. Look at me. However, that comes out in the natural. It's not like that dialogue happens in your head. But it's just like, blah, and you believe it. Hook, line, and sinker. You've got to watch out for these indicators. See, if they keep it up, if they keep going in that direction, you're going to die one day, and you're going to stand before the Lord thy God, and you're going to say what? He's going to say, you didn't fulfill what I put into your life. We've got to see it the way God sees it. It's time that we clean it up. It is time that we clean it up. We have to clean it up so that we could move forward with the Father. We have to. You know, don't, don't you just love Prophet Deckard's material from a seasoned, prophetic, revelatory teaching? Amazing. Amazing. How much... This teaching from them and the anointing in it speaks to where we're at today. To what's happening. How rampant 
God said this and God said that is going. These familiar spirits, rampant. The curses, rampant. How amazing it is what the Lord God has set in the prophet's material to be able to reach out today and to the hearts of the people listening. To my heart. My heart. Jeremiah 23, 19. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord God is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind, and it shall fall grievously upon the heads of the wicked. What was he talking about there? We're talking about the faults. We're talking about the deceits. 23, 20. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he has executed, until he has performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. <laughs> what, a, what a statement. See, faults, out of the darkness of their hearts, all the time blaming God. See, in the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. See, now we understand through this teaching. We understand. And as time goes on, we're going to be able to consider it perfectly. But we understand. Jeremiah had it bad in his day concerning familiar spirits and curses and the falseness, the seatness. He had it bad. But I tell you what, today we have it far, 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 far worse, exceedingly worse than Jeremiah's time. Listen, the way is narrow. This has become a pandemic. What am I talking about? Familiar spirits. I'm talking about curses. It has covered every single area, section, corner of this world. Any area where people gather in the name of the Lord God. A pandemic. And it's so interesting doing this teaching and reading that section because we are in the middle of a global pandemic. COVID-19. Pre-adventure. We know there's two kingdoms. There's a kingdom system. Things happen in the other kingdom first. Pre-adventure. What happened over there? For familiar spirits to be, have come so dominant in this realm, a pandemic. This realm absolutely creates the results and the judgments that come into it. A pandemic. This world in the natural with COVID-19 has basically shut down to be able to defend itself from this pandemic. What are we doing or willing to do by choice to shut down this pandemic? of familiar spirits and curses, what are we willing to do? Are we willing to shut it down? Are we willing to close the doors? Are we willing to turn off the TV? Are we willing to put things down? Are we willing to stop what's coming out of our mind and putting it on to other people? Are we willing? We're willing in the natural under this COVID-19 to wash our hands 10 times a day and to put on the soap and to be able to stay away from everybody and to hide in our houses and be careful. We don't want to die. But in the spirit, are we willing to do what we have to do like we are in the natural for this? you got to make it real in your life. More real than this COVID-19. More real than other things in our lives because that is the real world. pandemic it is, we now know what a pandemic is. We can now relate to really what a pandemic is and what the pandemic is with familiar spirits and curses. Here's another thing. To all the testimony of Jesus' denominations that are not part of this transition, 
You know, God has set past transitions, okay? They're there. Not all of them are going to come into the next transition. Heaven is our goal. Some are better off staying. Staying in the churches that they're in and not come into the next transition. Some it's not given to them. Leave them alone. Don't take their Jesus away from them. Don't take it away. Don't try to preach in their parking lots against their pastor to save them. They're going to heaven. Okay? Maybe they did their job. We got chosen of God for this transition. Amen. Don't think others have to be able to have to do it also. God has not commissioned you or anyone else to go into those other churches and to pull them out. So that's what wolves would do. There's a way to leave. Let's leave right. Don't try to take half the congregation with you. If you can't agree, just leave. And leave your mouth shut. Leave your mouth shut. See, confusion and division is not of God. There's a way to do this. Now, if a person wants to leave their church, right? They're transitioning with the Father. Leave the others alone. You're going to make the church divide. That's not your place. God just pricked your heart, maybe, to come on over and, okay, leave quietly. God does not want you to get into deception of others, get others to come with you. Just go where God's going. Learn what he's showing you. Understand. If you do get into these types of things, there'll be blood on your hands. And when you get judged on that day, it'll be there. Don't do it. Jeremiah 23, 21. I have not seen these prophets, yea, they ran. I have not spoken to them, yea, they have prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and have caused my people to hear my words, then they have turned them from the evil way and from the evil of their doings. See, that's what this, teacher's do, this teaching is doing. And I pray that this series gets out into the ears of every prophesying believer on the face of this earth. And now that's a tough one, okay? It's a tough one to do. But if we will take it wherever we have an opportunity to, to be able to hear it. See, there, you are hearing through this series God's counsel, the prophet's teaching. You're hearing it today. You can't go anywhere else to hear this stuff. Some people are hearing it, and, you know, and it's setting you free from the evil of your doings. Good. Be free of it. In Jeremiah 23, 3, And I am God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God far off. That's right. Can ye hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Right? Saith the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth? Saith the Lord. I have heard what the prophets say, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. See, liars don't go to heaven, do they? Using God's name faultlessly is going to keep you out of heaven. 23.6, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart. Curse is he that works in the name of the Lord disrespectfully, deceitfully. See, people are now saying, I didn't know it was this serious. Now you know. You know. We have a commission. Our commission is to get the truth out to other people, other believers. The truth will set you free. It was our time of transition as first fruits. We have spoken to the familiar spirits to get out of our lives. We have addressed them so that we can walk 
in the blessings. Together, one people. All right, we're going through a process. But we have to pass on the series. We have to pass on the YouTube link to other people. You know, maybe they won't listen. But it is our commission by the prophet in this series to pass this series on to other people. Again, this is what the prophet is commissioning in this teaching. Will we take it up? Tell them to study. Tell them to study and go through prophets and prophecy. You must understand prophets and prophecy. You must understand the curses. You must understand familiar spirits. You must understand how these things work. You must understand this is what's in front of us and we can get through it. Please study it. You know, we, we understand that uh, all of this, you know, the, has basically gone wacko. It, it's gone wacko. It's gone wacko. You know, it's time to come out from all of these false words and, the, and these curses. I mean, we have, we have ran right into them. And just on the other side of addressing this is the blessings and the blessings and the blessings that are going to run into us. We've got this roadblock, this bang, stopped. And to us, it looks wacko. What's going on? I'm doing all I know to do. But now we know more. Now we know more. But you're going to have to dig deep. You got to put your spiritual work boots on and you got to go to work. You got to go to work at getting the pride out of your heart. That indicator is set there by God so that you can start peeling away, peeling away the familiar spirits, the familiar spirits that are covering up the word of God that's in your heart that you need. The answer is there. It's covering it up. Tear it out. You tear it up with the Word of God. Yeah. Get into it. It's time that we come out from all of these false word and curses. See, darkness blasphemed the Father, right? See, they said that they wanted to be God, right? It's part of how they got into the position that they're in, separated from God. They wanted to be God. Darkness is relentless at presenting tricks to fool you to do the same thing. Trying to get you to say it was God when it wasn't God. Trying to get you to separate yourself from God. That's deep. That's deep. Think about it. Jeremiah 23, 27. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Hmm. The prophet that has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the calf, chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? It is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh a rock, it pierces. See, God's words, not others, right? His words. And then 30, Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. There's a story. There was a, a lady that was one of prophets, uh, uh, churches. Uh, she had stopped in, sat in the front, and uh, wrote down the stuff he had prophesied at that time. And there were some other ladies there, and other people. And a couple of weeks later, a few of the ladies came and said, hey, we went to this event down the road, and, and this lady was there, and she prophesied word for word what it is that uh, you prophesied. The prophet said, hey, does she look like this and this and this? She goes, yeah. She, that lady called herself a prophet, these ladies told the prophet. He goes, look, she wrote down every word from my service and went out there and did that. Unbelievable, isn't it? Unbelievable. 
Steal my words, every one from his neighbor. See, a prophet's place, a prophet's place is to warn you. Dates and times are rarely given. You know, but you still have choice within this warning. You've been given a warning within this teacher teaching. Our job is to get this message out. This message is anointed by the Father. See, the anointing convicts your heart. Have you been convicted? I have been convicted going through this. Don't let your mind steal it from you. Don't. See, darkness comes to steal, kill, and destroy what? God's truth. God's truth. What are you, what are, are you looking for with the God? See, God has given us an opportunity to have our hearts convicted, to get away from the false speakers and the deceits. We have to listen to him. Take it up. See, again, back to it being wacko. <laughs> See, people's flesh want to be seen. The flesh does, right? We'll call that wacko. You know, God's little mouthpieces. Come out from it. You know, some people are, are being used in hearing God. And still from time to time, their flesh gets involved, their mind gets involved, and they get acting like, uh, hey, it's them. They get into selfishness. Not allowing others in. Wacko. Some people know what's happening uh, with all of this, and they're into it, and, and their flesh still jumps in, and, and it gets messed in from time to time, and, you know, it's wacko. What I'm trying to say is there's so many different scenarios. But what we are, we are in a transition from one to another. we got to walk through it. It's going to be wacko. It's okay. It's not, I could say it's okay to be wacko, but not for long. Not for long. We're supposed to be coming out of it. There's different stages. There's different scenarios. The thing is, don't judge others about their process. Right? Pray for him. Pray for him. Embrace it. Run to the Father. Confess your sis sins one to another. You know, none of us is so holy. You know, we, we, we quit putting in others, you know? You know, everyone's just got to cut all of this stuff out. See, this teaching, the prophet Deckard's teaching is a major, major part of where we're at and what we're facing today. Today. I mean, everyone is wrong to some degree. We just got to stop this, I'm right, you're wrong stuff. We just got to stop it. Quit it. We don't have the right to act this way. We're acting this way towards God and the body and Messiah. It's embarrassing to God. He's like, come on. Come on, guys. Quit it. You got the teaching. Come on. Get into it. Let's go. Let's go. But we got to put down our pridely flesh if we're going to get in. And we are really going to say, I did this wrong. I did that wrong. Or this person did this wrong from the pulpit. Or this got involved. And clean it up. You were what, what, wrong? Oh, yeah, from time to time. Fix it. Clean it up. Fix it. I'll fix me. You fix you. You can't fix me. I can't fix you. Let's just take care of ourselves. Stop the sin. Get out of the curses. Stop cursing you and the ones you love. None of us deserve this. we got to come out of it. Everybody has something or some things, plural, to come out of when it comes to this topic. But now we understand that we're all in the same boat. There's no big use. I'm greater than you. I'm this, I'm that. God is not a respecter of persons, of faith and faithfulness. No one's greater. Nobody is greater. Yeah, we're given responsibilities, we're given anointings to work with, and all sorts of different things. 
but you're also given the tools to be able to do it, whatever it is that you have to do. And other people are given tools for whatever it is they have to do. Nobody is greater. In 2331, we're almost done. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams and saith the Lord and tell them and accuse my people in error by the lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. The people and what they put their hand to is cursed, okay? We need to break the curses. Break the curses on what you have put your hand to while you were in these falseness, while you were in these deceits. If you're in these deceits and what you put your hand to, it will not work. No matter how much you try, you got to go back. you got to break it. you got to break them all. you got to address what it is that you need to address to be able to fix it correctly in the eyes of the Father so it can go forward. Whatever it is. When you're cursed, everything that you put your hand to will be affected by that curse. Family, kids, business, ministry, work, jobs, whatever. You're going through hard times. Hey, the blessings can't fall upon you. On the other hand, if you're not pushing hard enough with God, you're not going through those dry places, are you? Push a little harder. Get into those dry places. Grow with the Father. Use the dry places as an indicator to know you've got to fix something. Thank God he's bringing you forward. See, when you're involved in an anointing like this from the teachings from the prophet Tom Deckard, you're probably more times than that going to see the, the heavens kind of tighten up a bit. You kind of want that to happen for short periods of time because you're growing and you're growing and you're pushing. See, the next teaching we're going to talk a little bit more about what you put your hand to while you're in faults and while you're in deceits, it won't work. But I'll leave you with this. We are in the restoration business, tackling all the familiar spirits, darkness, gods of darkness, and putting them under us. We are in the restoration business, first fruits of the remnant, but we have to pass through them. First fruits, you have an incredible job in front of you, all first fruits. There's none greater than the other. And if you have a problem with that, I hope you don't. But if you do, we can cast that filthy, familiar spirit out of you. We're doing this together. Familiar spirits are rampant all over the place. First fruits, think of yourself like a pre adventure. I like that word. You're like a scout in the military. You're going out and you're spying. You're learning about the enemy. You're testing their defenses. And you're coming back and you're communicating with the organization and to each other, teaching the rest of the military that is being enlisted so that they can learn to know what it is that we know. But we had to go out and know before we could know our transition. What we need to do is first fruits. And in God's time, we, the army, will know enough, be strong enough to take the enemy, the enemy together, leaving no person behind and keeping all the ground that we have won. But it takes a brave few first to go into the land and say, we are taking the land. We are taking the land. Let's close in prayer. Father God, Father God, we just thank you, Father, for who it is you are and who it is we are with you, Father God. We just bless you, Father, and we bless your name. 
Just thank you for all of this message, the anointing that's in it, the teaching of Prophet Deckard, prophets and prophecy. Just be with us as we go forward, Father. Stir up a desire inside of us, Father, to not put this down, to take it as life, Father. Life-changing for us and our kids and for the remnant as we go forward. In Yeshua's name, amen.